First of all, I'd uh, like to echo the dedication of this workshop to the memory uh, of Jonathan uh, Fine. Um, thank you for the opportunity uh, to participate, um, and I'm absolutely delighted that we've got paper cups today, which I think is a step forward. Uh, in these few minutes, uh, I will uh, refer to three uh, documents. Uh, the first of these uh, is the latest report uh, on AQ uh, and Daesh, uh, which I mentioned uh, yesterday, dated uh, the 15th of July uh, this year. I mentioned it to you yesterday afternoon, so by now I hope you have fully uh, digested it uh, and benefited from its comments, uh, which will be of great gratification to its editor, who is sitting just there, Edmund Fittenbrand. Uh, who spoke to us uh, yesterday. It's a brilliant document. If you rather foolishly have not read it overnight, uh, then please spend your weekend uh, doing so. The second document I'll, I'll refer to is has its provenance within this fine institution, uh, and that's the report by ICT uh, on the International Cyber uh, Regulation Project. Again, uh, an excellent read, and I'll, I'll refer to uh, its relevance. And thirdly, with gratitude to the editor of uh, the New York Times, uh, the 7th and 8th edition of last uh, weekend, uh, and a point I want to make uh, because, it, because it concerns the plight of women uh, and children uh, in Syria. Uh, which I think is enormously uh, important uh, that we should note, and I'll touch on uh, why. Um, on this very significant anniversary, and I was delighted that we soberly commemorated that yesterday uh, evening, uh, I want to dedicate my own short remarks uh, to a former great friend and professional colleague who was murdered uh, at the World Trade Center in New York 18 years ago today. Uh, his name was John P. O'Neill, a former FBI agent who on the day of 9-11 was the recently appointed Chief of Security for the World Trade Center. If John, always a larger-than-life character, was here today, he would push us very hard to make the very best use of this great conference uh, and to enhance the protection uh, of the public against terrorism. How can we do this? Can I presume to offer you some thoughts which owe a debt to John P. O'Neill and many, many others from my own journey through counterterrorism? In early 2005, my security role transformed from the national to the global. Uh, I began to comprehend that despite 38 years of previous policing experience, including 11 years as head of counterterrorism at Scotland Yard, that I still had a very great deal to learn. My job in 2005 was as the newly appointed Under Secretary General for the new Department of Safety uh, and Security of the UN. The genesis for this new UN department was a massive truck bombing at the UN headquarters at the Canal Hotel in Baghdad on the 19th of August 2003, which caused multiple deaths and injuries. The UN attack was perpetrated by Al-Qaeda in Iraq, as it was then known, now morphed into IS uh, or Daesh. So the job that I was performing daily owed its origins to Daesh. A great bonus uh, of senior leadership role of the UN, especially for a beginner like me, was the support of 192 member states. And I would like to take this opportunity to record my appreciation for the support that I always received from the ambassador uh, and the permanent representatives uh, of the member state uh, of Israel in New York and elsewhere around the world. One Israeli leader offered me a special wisdom and that was the late, great Meir Dagan, former director of Mossad. I salute his memory, and I hope that his vision for the future of this great country prevails one day. A few words on the UK threat. There are three main components of this threat. Salafi jihadist, which is overwhelmingly the most acute. Secondly, extreme right wing. Third, dissident Irish Republican violence. Each of these strands has substantial homegrown components. The Salafi jihadist threat to the UK is underlined by two major factors. The first is a span of terrorist methodology with spectacular high impact 
attacks at the top end uh, and at the base, individuals with vehicles and knives. The second factor is the sheer weight of numbers, which are daunting, uh, and I admire my successive colleagues uh, for coping with them. Uh, there are daily variations, but the ballpark figures are as follows. 600 live cases at any one time, 3,000 individuals under investigation, and over 20,000 closed subject of interest who at one time have been of greater interest but are not categorized as posing a present interest. This demand is likely to be heightened uh, by the factor of foreign terrorist threats, the FTF. Uh, others more expert will comment and have commented uh, on the FTF. I want to say a word uh, about dependents, who are a cause for concern now in the future, especially if they feel aggrieved at their treatment. Edmund's UN report uh, notes that the, they are a cause for concern, uh, and to quote, and it's a wonderfully diplomatic phrase uh, of the UN, uh, that if they are dealt with uh, inappropriately. The Al Hal camp in northeast Syria houses over 70,000 women and children. It's a humanitarian nightmare and an enormous rebuke of the aid effort of the whole global community. The camp lacks basic sanitation, clean water, or food. It's difficult to imagine a place anywhere on earth that is more likely to produce dire consequences and very bad counterterrorism. It's said that rule number one in the basic guide to counterterrorism is don't make avoidable mistakes. Al Hal Camp uh, is, seems a regrettable example perhaps the premier example today of an international counter-terrorism mistake being made as we sit here. My personal concern in addition to the dependence and FTF issue about the UK Salafist threat is the deployment of chemical weapons. In his brilliant book, The Secret World, A History of Intelligence, Sir Christopher Andrew cites Winston Churchill who wrote the further backwards you look, the further forward you can see. Sir so Christopher asserts that Churchill's maxim uh, it, of the lessons of history is, and I quote with deference to Sir Christopher, one of the keys to understanding 21st century counterterrorism. A very long-term perspective gives greater insight uh, into the coming terrorist use of WMD than the short-term view and experience of low-tech terrorist attacks since 9-11. One of the great constants of the last thousand years has been the global proliferation, once slow, now rapid, of all human inventions. WMD will not be the first exception to this iron law uh, of history. Edmund Fitton's splendid monitoring team have referred to the IS capability to produce mustard gas and recommend that UN member states develop response capabilities, including engagement with the OPCW and Interpol. I regret that the degree of capacity and capability to deal with this dimension uh, of the threat, which is with us today uh, at the level of gas and poisons, uh, is not uh, universal. Beyond the two threats of Salafin jihadist uh, is the extreme right wing. Dr. Tim Wilson, director of the Handa Center for the Study of Terrorism and Political Violence at the University of St. Andrews, very recently gave evidence to the New Zealand Royal Commission uh, on the attacks on the Christchurch Mosque. It's really excellent that New Zealand is following this up with an instrument uh, as serious as a Royal uh, Commission, and it's got a very distinguished uh, membership. When he appeared before them, uh, Tim Wilson said, such events are historically very rare, but seem to be becoming more celebrated, especially on the further fringes of the far right. A particular concern is that the emergence of a sort of institutionalized memory amongst would-be killers of how to stage atrocities most effectively to achieve maximum publicity. I think Tim's words uh, provide us with a worrisome warning. 
The third strand of the UK threat is of dissident Irish Republican violence, uh, which remains a serious threat, notably in Northern Ireland. The main targets have been police and prison officers uh, as victims uh, of bombings and shooting. However, a young female journalist, Lara McKee, was shot by dissidents in Londonderry as recently as April this year. She'd been a remarkable young woman who diligently researched the long years of Irish terrorism known as the Troubles. One regret remarkable fact that she exposed in her work as an investigative journalist was that more people took their own lives or have taken their own lives in the 16 years after the Troubles than actually died during uh, the, the Troubles. It's a remarkable message about the long-term impact of terrorism uh, on a community. Let me end my remarks by setting out my thoughts on CT delivery. I submit that CT delivery has three vital components. A wider concept of pre uh, prevention. Neil Basu uh, reminded of this on Monday and, and forcibly steered us uh, to a greater vision towards the fundamental importance of prevent. My second uh, issue is a whole of society uh, approach to, to counterterrorism on which I addressed you yesterday. Uh, and thirdly, a 21st century strategic foundation. My personal recommendation uh, is that the prevention approach should be global, regional, national, uh, and uh, at local uh, level. Um, over the last two days, we've had some insightful expert perspectives, to which I couldn't add, um, on where the issue of proliferation, particularly of those locations which are being exploited by terrorists, uh, are uh, taking place. But one region uh, I, I would highlight, uh, because I think it's enormously important, uh, is the Sahel, where capability and capacity building uh, is absolutely vital, but a gargantuan task. The respected Economist magazine has carried some recent excellent regional reporting from the Sahel, uh, and there's one quote from a Western officer who is currently working on capability building uh, in the Sahel, uh, and his observation is, are we just building sandcastles at low tide? Just before I close, I'd like to stress uh, the increasing importance uh, of the UN to counter terrorism, uh, as we've seen uh, and heard uh, in the sessions uh, so far. What I want to commend to you is that the tenure uh, of Antonio Guterres as the current UN Secretary General will continue to be very important to counter terrorism, and we should strain every sinew to support him and his team. Kofi Annan, immediate, not quite his predecessor, made a significant step with the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy uh, in 2006, in which I was proud to be able to support him. That work included the principle that terrorist acts are crimes which cannot be justed, justified ever on political grounds. Thus, the UN General Assembly, in adopting the UN Global Strategy in 2006 ended forever the spurious claim that one man's terrorist uh, is another man's freedom fighter. Antonio Guterres, interestingly, has gone a stage beyond that. Very shortly after his election, he made a landmark speech at the School of Oriental and Arab Studies, SOAS, in London, and that was on the 16th of November, uh, of 2017, and luckily I, I was able to be there. He made the key assertion that terrorist attacks are in breach of and contrary to the principles of human rights. His statement was unequivocal. He said terrorism is fundamentally the denial and the destruction of human rights. Very finally, uh, let me refer to the uh, ICT uh, document, uh, which, I, as I say, is, uh, is really excellent, not only on its uh, subject of terrorist abuse of the internet, uh, but more widely. As I mentioned, it's entitled uh, International Cyber Regulation uh, Project. Um, its authors uh, are indeed the authors and organizers uh, of this conference, so well done you. Uh, 
As its title uh, indicates, uh, the report focuses uh, on terrorist abuse uh, of the internet, and it's particularly its analysis of the 10 ways in which this is currently occurring uh, is compelling. But I want to put this report in a wider context. Its first recommendation is that effective counterterrorism requires a multidimensional and multi-stakeholder approach, which is not only tactical, but strategic. What I would invite you to ponder is whether a recommendation prompted by the latest manifestation of the terrorist threat, that is, its occupation of the digital space, should not also be entirely apt and strikingly relevant to the wider space of more traditional CT challenges. I judge that the older challenges, which are more familiar to us, do not encompass multi-dimensional and multi-stakeholder thinking as much as they should, and are very commonly less than strategically optimal. Thus, my closing thought uh, is to recommend the broader application of recommendation one uh, of this report to the total spectrum uh, of counterterrorism. Thank you for your attention.